Hello and welcome to Hold the Eye Images video podcasting. I'm Bill Henderson. And I'm Brian Trey Montana. And today we're going to talk about one lens. If you just bought a camera and you need a lens, it's an interchangeable uh, lens camera, what lens should you buy? And there's a lot of disagreement about that. Uh, we have a little disagreement amongst ourselves uh, here. But uh, we'll start out with you should buy... I'm going to start again. I don't even know. <laughs> well, we should introduce ourselves because that's what they said we didn't do last well, time. Well, we did. Just did. Well, we? I think that... Okay. Wait. Yeah. I don't know, but maybe what if somebody's never seen the podcast before? Who are you and what do you do? And, you know, <clears throat> I mean, is that worth... Or should we do that can and put that at the head of each one and just make it... Or does that just get boring and take too much time? Because I read that as them wanting to say, uh, I'm Bill Henderson. I've been a photographer for 20 years. No, um, I, don't, the, I don't want to do that. Okay, every time. okay, okay. All right. Hello, and welcome to Hold the Eye Images video podcasting. I'm Bill Henderson. And I'm Brian Trey Montana. And today we're going to talk about which lens to buy if you only have one and you have, obviously, uh, a camera that accepts interchangeable lenses. So for my pick, and I'm going to start right off, I think it should be 35 millimeter. Really? <laughs> That's right. Stranded on a desert island, 35 millimeter lens is all you need. That's right. Well, I've changed because I spent a lot of time uh, with my, my one lens being a zoom lens, but since I've been shooting a lot more Leica and with the Sony, um, A7S and the Leica lenses on there, I've kind of moved away from a, from a zoom lens. And um, I, I hate to make this a boring podcast, but um, I'm, I'm inclined to, to, to agree with you that the 35, you know, is probably the best lens out there if you have to grab one that's going to do it all. But, but it has to be fast. Okay. Now, if budget is a consideration, I think it should be a 50 millimeter lens. Yeah. Because you can buy... A really fast 50, a 50 1.8. Um, or three, for, three or 400 bucks. Yeah, even sometimes cheaper than that if you yeah. get a non-autofocusing lens or something that may be from Nikon or Canon from, from the film days that would still work fine on any uh, DSLR uh, digital camera. Um, so, so I think that that's, that's uh, cost-wise uh, probably the, the, the best choice for sure. Yeah. And so people uh, look at Nikon and they... And Canon for that matter too, and look at the troika of lenses. This is the intermediate one, so it starts out with a 14 to 24 zoom, and this is the 24 to 70 zoom, and then the 70 to 200, and, and that covers everything. But quite frankly, I believe you have to use a lens at one focal length and learn how to use your camera and your lens. I learned on a 50 millimeter uh, lens, that's all I could afford. And I spent, I just got closer or further away from my subject. Uh -huh. And I think the reason I select the 35 millimeter lens is because it gives you a little more uh, of a wide angle, obviously, and you get a little more of the environment in. Uh -huh. You can use it for landscape. You have to get closer, obviously, if, if you're going to shoot portraits with it, but it still works for that. Um, I think it's... I, I like a 24 millimeter too. Uh -huh. It's a little more difficult to use. You have to, you have to really uh, use it a lot to understand yeah. it. But 35 is a, is a pretty good choice. Well, I, I think going with a fixed focal length lens also um, helps you to. You need to see at the angle and the perspective that the lens gives you. If, if, you're, if the only time you can see to compose a picture is when you bring your camera to your eye and, and understand what's going to be in and out of that frame, um, it severely limits you or handicaps you in, in what you see and when you choose to make a photograph. But if you are shooting all day long, every day with a 35, your eyes sort of you know, adjust to that field of view. And, and, and being able to really understand before you even pick up the camera you know, what you're choosing to include and exclude and also, and at that point start moving in or walking, or walking backwards as you're getting your camera up and ready to shoot so that you can anticipate that moment and get the, and yeah. get the image. I think that's an important piece of, of that spontaneity, you know, with, with that single lens. And I, I think 
you miss a step if you start out with a zoom lens. It just, you uh -huh. just, I don't want to say you're lazy, but you do miss something in kind of fundamental photography. Uh -huh. If if you start out with, uh, I have a one of these lenses is a an eight uh, twenty eight uh, or an eighteen to this is oh, this is the fifty. It's an eighteen to to uh, one hundred and twenty millimeters, and that's a zoom lens, and that covers everything you'd want to shoot. But it's you just miss something if you start out that way, in my view. Yeah. Also, back to the 50, you know, don't, don't forget that the 50 millimeter lens um, is so popular because it's, it's how we see, right? It's got yeah. about the same angle of view as our eyes do. Obviously, we, we can see, you know, out here on the edges, but it's not sharp um, and it's not in focus. But our, our, our perceptible view is about that 43, 46 degree angle of view, and that's also what... Uh, a 50 is so in terms of matching what we see in terms of documentary and those kinds of issues that's why the 50 became so popular um, with 35 millimeter full frame photography because it does replicate that and when you go to longer lenses or shorter lenses less than 50 you do have some distortions you know 35 isn't bad but you know I don't know that I I'm a big fan of shooting portraits with a 24 especially if you're going to get close to them because then you get some of that distortion. Well, you, you, know. you can't get too close. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah you're going to get some of those, yeah. those things that are closer to the camera end up looking very large. You know? So you know, if you're going to be backed off a little bit, then I could see some of these wider, wider focal lengths. But um, I think you do have to be concerned if you do get too close to the distortion that happens with those wider, wider lenses. So bottom line, if money's an issue, buy a 50. Start out with it, put it on your camera, learn how to use it. Many, many photographers started out with a 50 millimeter lens. If you want something a little more exotic, a little more flexible, uh, buy a 35 millimeter. And it doesn't make any difference with today's ISOs, the speed of the lens. It's not as critical as it was with film because you can adjust the light sensitivity of your camera. And anything to wrap it up there, Brian? I think that does it. All right. Stay tuned for our next podcast where. Brought to you from Hold the Eye Images in Campbell, California. Thanks a lot for watching.